Welcome to Podcast 8-3, Tangent Lines. In this lesson, we're going to learn two theorems. The first theorem is how the tangent line relates to the radius, and then we will apply that theorem, and it will involve, of course, right triangles. The second theorem is how two tangent lines relate to one circle, and then we will apply that with a circle inscribed within a triangle. Using the sketchpad file for this lesson, let's look at the first theorem. Here we see a tangent line to a circle, and here we see a random line that's attached to a circle. So the idea is what is the theorem? Well, when this line is moved a certain way, like a secant, obviously it's not a tangent, but when we adjust it so that it appears to be a tangent, then the angle that's being formed right here is approaching 90 degrees. The uh, reality of that is that it must be 90 degrees. The theorem says the tangent line is always perpendicular to the radius. The explanation has to do with indirect proof, something that would take longer for me to explain than this video. But there is one and only one idea here, is that a radius and a tangent are always perpendicular, forming a right angle. Right angles, of course, are huge in geometry. Let's apply that. Here is one problem. I'm not going to read all the words, but the basic idea is if we have a tangent line, and just from a point outside of a circle, let's just take the segment going to the point of tangency, then that will create a right triangle. So generally speaking, if you have a tangent line to a circle, or just the segment of it, then consider the radius that could be drawn, and the tangent, and then from the center to this point outside the circle. That would be the hypotenuse. One thing to just be aware of is that the radius is equal in all directions. So given the radius is 300, we can also say that this radius is 300, which makes this distance outside the circle something else. And now we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And then, depending on what information is given, is to how we solve the problem. So this is the main idea of the lesson. I'm not going to go any farther than that. You can refer back to the Pythagorean theorem. Here's a completely different situation. Given a point outside of a circle, what if I draw more than one tangent, specifically two tangents? These directions will help you get there, but I'm just going to go ahead and draw these. What theorem might hold true for this idea, two tangents to a circle? Well, possibly you could tell right away the darker red segments that I've created seem to be the same length, and of course they must be the same length, and here is the Y. If we actually construct what we looked at before, the right triangle, we see we have this right angle, a right triangle, but I have even a second right triangle. And what do we know about the two right triangles? The radii are congruent, the shared side is congruent, and these are right angles. So by the theorem hypotenuse leg, these triangles must be congruent. Therefore, this segment is congruent to this segment by the idea of CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So the idea of this theorem is, given a point outside of a circle, we can construct two tangents, and the tangents are always congruent. How do we apply that theorem? Here we go. Here's a situation of a circle inscribed within a triangle. I'm not going to use these particular measurements up here. I'm going to just simplify this a bit. If we know a little bit of information, let's say CE is some value like 5, and that BF is some other value, I'll just call it 6. Can we find any or every segment, or possibly the perimeter of the triangle? Well, the theorem says that from this point, the tangent to the circle is congruent to the tangent to the circle in this direction. So if that's 5, this must be 5. The theorem again says if the tangent from this point to the circle is 6, then the tangent from this point to the circle in this direction must be 6. So now I know that this is 5, this is 5, this is 6, this is 6. Does that help explain what these values are? No, not in this case. It's not enough given information. There are other ways to deal with this, though. What if I knew each and every segment of the triangle? Could I find the pieces? So I'll just make up three random numbers. Let's say this is 12, this is 10, and this is 14. Now these, of course, are not midpoints. 
So I don't know just from glancing at it that this value is 6 and 6, but I do know that the two values add up to 12. So let's generalize and say I don't know what this is, I'll call it x. Then the remaining segment must be, that is, this piece plus this piece adds up to 12. So this piece here must be the whole length 12 take away this part. Again, the entire length 12 minus the unknown part would be what's left. Now we apply the theorem. If this is x, then this tangent must be the same. If this, oh, well now let's take this idea. If the whole thing is 10, and whatever this part is, then this piece must be 10 minus that part. And again, applying the theorem, if this is 10 minus x, then so is this. If this is 12 minus x, then so is this. Now I know the whole thing is 14, and I have two pieces in terms of x. I have an algebra problem. Now we know that this value, 10 minus x, plus this value, 12 minus x, will equal the entire segment given us 14. So we can write that equation. 10 minus x adding the other segment, 12 minus x equals the total 14. Do a little algebraic work and we get 22 minus 2x will equal the 14. Let's move the 22 over here. Minus 2x or negative 2x will equal subtracting 22 gives me negative 8. Dividing both sides by the negative 2, of course, will give me x is 4. If x is 4, go back to the problem, what do we know? If this much is 4, then this much must be 10 minus 4, 6. If this much is 4, then this much must be 12 minus the 4, which is 8. If that's 8, then so is this. If that's 6, then so is this, and that happens to add up to 14. Must have done it correctly. So again, we have two theorems in this lesson. Given a circle, a point outside the circle, we can create a tangent line to it. And at this point of tangency, if we draw the radius, then that radius is perpendicular to the tangent. The radius perpendicular to the tangent. Or if we have a circle and a point outside of the circle, and we draw a tangent and a second tangent to the circle, then these tangents are congruent. Two theorems for the lesson. This has been podcast 8-3, Tangent Lines. Thank you.